React is an incredibly popular choice for building front-end applications. And as a result, lots of people want to learn it and lots of employers need employees who know React. But what's the fastest way to learn it? In this video, we're going to explore that idea and try and figure out if it's possible to learn React fast. So learning is a non-linear path. A lot of people might lay it out in a linear fashion because it's easy for us to think about. It's like you learn JavaScript and then you learn React. And within React, you learn this first and then you learn that. No learning is linear. Learning is an exploration. So when you hear somebody say, you need to learn the fundamentals of JavaScript before you learn any React or any kind of you need to learn X before you learn Y kind of statement, don't really listen to them. You need to stop thinking about learning as a linear path and think about learning as a big graph. There's lots of nodes in that graph and each of those are chunks of information that you could know. And there's certain links between them. Concepts relate to each other. When you're learning, you can learn any of those chunks and then you can learn some more and eventually you'll start to see the connections between them. And that's when you start to build up a richer picture and your understanding becomes richer and better and you know more. And then the more you know, the more you have the ability to learn more. And every time you learn something, it will strengthen your knowledge of the related concepts. But when you hear somebody say you need to learn JavaScript before you learn React, it's like, yes, some things in React will be easier to understand if you know that piece of JavaScript beforehand. But then you could also go the other way and say, if you learn that piece of React, when you go back and finally learn the fundamental of JavaScript, you now have a real world application of that thing and you're gonna understand it better. So it's not about learn JavaScript before React, it's about everything you learn builds upon the things you knew previously. And it works both ways. If you learned React and then you picked up the JavaScript fundamentals, you'll understand a lot of that better because you have concrete examples. But if you learned the fundamentals first and then went to React, you'll be able to discern what's a JavaScript piece of syntax versus what's specifically React, and that will make picking up the React easier. So whichever you learn second becomes easier because you knew the first. But if you do it in a different order, it doesn't make it any harder to learn. Learning is hard anyway. So don't try and dumb it down. That's not the goal. The goal is to just progressively build upon what you already know and link concepts together, not in a linear way, but in a graph. But with that out the way, let's jump into the specifics of how I think you can go about learning React a little faster. Point one might seem a little obvious, but it needs to be said because a lot of people, including myself, kind of skipped this one in the early days. And the point is read the React documentation because honestly, it's incredible. I've been around the world of tech for several years now, and there is some documentation that is terrible. And there's some pretty good documentation out there as well. And React is really one of the best. It's incredibly well written. It doesn't assume any prior knowledge. It really just walks you through what you need to know and points you in the right direction if there's further knowledge required or would be helpful on a certain topic. It will link out to other people's blogs or other people's courses so you can learn a bit more about that topic. But you really don't need to do that because the documentation itself is very, very good. So do yourself a favor and read that documentation. They even have some tutorials where they'll walk you through building a small application if you're more of a hands-on learner. So they have you covered on both sides. If you're hands-on, they've got you. If you prefer to learn the theory first and then dive in later, they've got you on that front as well. So if you read the React documentation, you'll have a pretty good idea of what React is and what it's all about. Then it comes to actually diving into stuff and building things. My biggest point here is simplify. And this is a big issue I see with a lot of tutorial content out there online. They focus on the whole ecosystem around React when they're espousing that they're teaching a beginner's React tutorial, but they're teaching full scale React that you would see at a company where you've got full build tools and pipelines for like the build process and stuff. You need to know that stuff if you're gonna be a professional React developer, but when you're just learning React, you need to simplify. You need to know about what is React versus what's a build tool around it. 
And if you're trying to learn them both, it's going to get tangled in your mind and it's going to be harder to understand. And then you're not going to know if you're learning about a particular build tool or some other tooling around the ecosystem, or if you're learning some specific React thing. So you need to strip all of the, the tooling away and focus just on learning React. And it is actually possible to run React in the browser without a build tool. And that's, in my opinion, how you should start because that's the simplest way where you can really isolate what you're learning and focus on React. Once you've got that React knowledge down, you can then focus on the tooling outside of it. And it's gonna be way easier to pick up the tooling because you understand where the boundary between the tool and React lies. And then when you can separate the two, and you already know one of them, you can now focus on the other. And then you're having a focused learning every step of the way. You're learning React, you learned that, now you're learning the tool and it's focused every step of the journey. And this is an idea that's been researched a lot when it comes to how humans learn and it's called chunking. The way chunking works is we need to learn small pieces of information and then we can start grouping those pieces of information into chunks. And then as we learn more, we can group chunks into larger chunks and it keeps going in this kind of hierarchical way. You can think about, say, a game of chess where you've got a grandmaster who's one of the best players in the world playing against a complete amateur. They're looking at the same chessboard. They have the same information. The grandmaster looks at it with one glance and they have such deep chunking in their brain that they know these combination of pieces means these kinds of threats and these kind of strategic ideas and these kind of tactical ideas and all of that is going through their mind at lightning speed just by looking at the board and they're seeing the whole structure where somebody like me who's a very beginner basic chess player I don't have that knowledge I don't have all of those chunks that they have. So I have to look at each individual piece and then ask myself, how does that piece move? Oh yeah, that's a bishop, it, it moves diagonally. So which squares can I go to? And I have to calculate that for each individual piece. The level of chunking that I've got is on the piece level. And even on an individual square level, I don't see larger things that a grandmaster would see. And if I was to learn chess, I can't come in from the top and try to think about chess the way the grandmaster thinks about it. I have to start from the bottom and start growing the chunks upwards by learning the basics and building on top. And that's how you need to approach all learning. By approaching React in the way that a professional developer sees React is like learning chess like a grandmaster plays it. It's just not going to work. It's too complex. You don't want to learn the build tooling and the pipelines and continuous integration and all of these things when you're already struggling with the syntax of React. It just won't work. You need to learn React outside of the build tools and all of that. Once you've got that, then you start chunking and layering in things to improve your knowledge and increase your overall ability with React. I think tools like Create React App really do a great job in improving that beginner experience because they're abstracting a lot of the tools away from you. If you're really trying to learn it, I think you should even avoid Create React App and f at least for the first several hours of your journey in React, just write React in the browser, which is possible. You can even have like JSX in the browser if you, if you know what to do. And those are the kinds of tutorials that I think we should be seeing for React. Those are the kinds of tutorials that I'm gonna be creating because I think that's the most value. So moving on to point number two, this is in a similar vein, forget best practices. Best practices are out there to help professional production grade applications scale, both in terms of scaling the team who's working on it, but also scaling the amount of users who can use it. And that's why we have best practices, because it makes things like that easier. If you're just beginning React, you don't need to worry about any of that. That's not what you need to worry about. It's like the Grandmaster and me playing chess again. Stop approaching it like a Grandmaster approaches it. Approach it like a beginner because you are a beginner. It's, it's really that simple. So forget about best practices. In fact, actively breaking best practices is a great way to learn because the best practice is a best practice for a reason. And if you go against it, you're going to run into the issues potentially of why that best practice became a thing in the first place. You're gonna make the mistakes and you're gonna be like, ah, this is really difficult because I did it that way. I really wish I had it done it differently. And if you do that, you might actually find you derive the best practices yourself. Now you know why they're useful. That's way more valuable than just following somebody else's 
best practice because you figured it out on your own. You're going to remember why. You're not just going to be like, oh, what's that thing that I read on that Medium article that I have to do? Mm, oh, I can't really remember. But you'll definitely remember if it's like, oh, remember that code I wrote that was terrible and I hated myself because it didn't work right and it was really hard to add things? That's why I need to do it this way. You'll remember that. So forget best practices and if anything, actively push back against them and try things. Because learning is about exploration, not following rigid rules. So if you're just blindly following best practices, you are not exploring. So you are limiting the learning potential. And once you've learned React and you've made a ton of mistakes, you're now in a position to learn the best practices because you'll understand why they're there. And you can now focus on learning those in isolation, which goes back to the chunking idea. So point number three, is just build things, build anything, build everything. It doesn't matter. You need to make mistakes. And the best way to make mistakes is just try build stuff, build hard stuff, build easy stuff, build big stuff, build small stuff. It doesn't matter. Just be building. There's just absolutely no substitute for this when it comes to learning. You need to just be building stuff and just pick anything, copy things, find your favorite applications, try copy it. It doesn't even have to be a full application. You like a like a button on a particular website that has some cool hover states, try build that. You like the a particular card or something? I don't know. Try build it. Quantity is the key here. The quality can come later. You just need as much experience as possible. And just don't get bogged down on what should I build. I see a lot of beginners who are like, I just don't know what to build. And, and I get that because you're trying to build something good. It doesn't matter if it's good. You just need to build a lot of things. Most of it's not going to be good, but you have to get through that if you're going to build something good later because you're not you're building good skills, not good applications. So just go for it. It doesn't matter if you're building something, you're doing nothing wrong. And then point number four is kind of related to everything that I've just said, and that's just experiment. Just explore and experiment. Go crazy. Just ask yourself wacky questions like what happens if I build this entire application as just a single big component? I don't know, try it. See how that works for you. Go the complete opposite way. Can I make the smallest possible components, every tiny little thing as a component, and then I compose everything together to make the bigger application? Try that as well. Just come up with as many ridiculous ideas as you can and see if it works. See what it does. Like, most of it is not going to be good, but you've explored and that's where you're learning. Like I've said before, you need to understand where the extreme boundaries of possibility are if you were going to feel comfortable in the center. And when you're writing real production professional applications in React, you're going to be living in the center most of the time because that's where the good code lies. You're not going to be using one component as your entire application with no subcomponents, but you've done that. So you understand the benefits and weaknesses of that approach and all the other wacky approaches you tried. And you have just a much better, well-rounded knowledge of the whole space of React rather than just the quote unquote good part of React. If you understand the solution space, you can apply things much better because you feel much more comfortable doing so. And you'll be a, a much better developer for it as well, because you will have seen things through all sorts of different ways that most people have never seen because they've never tried it. And it's that kind of thing that's going to bring true skill and inspiration to you in the future. So to round everything out, my tips to learn React as fast as possible. One, read the React documentation. Two, Simplify. Start on the smallest possible chunks and build up from there. Just forget about tooling. Point number three, forget about all best practices and if anything, actively go against them. Point number four, build things, lots of things, as many things as you can. And point five, just experiment. Go crazy. Have crazy ideas and try it. And if you do all of that, I promise you, you will become a very, very good React developer very quickly. So that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a big thumbs up if you did. And if you disagree with any of these points, let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a discussion about this because I am truly passionate about learning and teaching all topics, but in this case, especially React. So I'd love to hear anybody who disagrees strongly with me because maybe I'll learn a thing or two as well. And then we're all winners. If you do like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get notified for every video that I upload. 
But until next time, stay hungry and keep coding.